So hello and welcome to the video. The first quarter of 2021 is behind us, so it's time to present a channel update. I set six goals for 2021 in this video, so it's time to reveal my progress in achieving those goals. I have actually made a few bookings, so there is something fun to talk about. Not many of you watched that video, and having rewatched it myself, it was a bit dull. So I'll try and use the video making experience I've gained over the last three months to make this video a bit more interesting. One thing I have learned is to create a hook to keep people watching the video for as long as possible. So at the end of this video, I will be revealing the next four videos I will be uploading to this channel. So stick around. Hi, I'm Matt. Over the last 25 years, I've traveled a lot. I've lived in five countries on four continents. I've flown over 1.3 million miles. I've visited over 100 countries, every American state, but I'm nowhere near done. So hit subscribe to see where I go next and perhaps get some inspiration for your next trip. Probably the most significant thing that happened this quarter was this. About three seconds for the jab and perhaps 15 minutes to complete the drive through experience from end to end. I had the AstraZeneca jab and did feel a bit wonky for a day or so afterwards. A few weeks before my second jab is due, but it is good to know that the beginning of the end has started. So let's take a look at the channel. I set myself the goal of uploading 60 videos in 2021, and in the first quarter I uploaded 18, so I'm well on target. I should comfortably be able to upload two a week once restrictions are lifted and I am able to travel again. Last week I uploaded a video about GeoGuessr, which I enjoyed making and many of you seem to have enjoyed watching. So I am planning to make a few more, which I'll probably upload midweek. I also want to monetize this channel in 2021. That requires me to get 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time, and it will allow me to irritate you all by adding advertising to my videos. It is possible that YouTube is already adding advertising to my videos, particularly in the US, but if I monetize, I will then at least get a share of it. I'm around 60% of the way towards achieving this, which considering I was at about 15% at the turn of the year, represents pretty good progress. I really enjoyed this moment. A big chunk of this growth came from a shout out I received from Rob at Head for Points, for which I am most grateful. I think perhaps 250 people subscribed as a result of that coverage. Of those 18 uploads, three were shorts. What's a short, I hear you ask? You may remember that about six months ago there was a great controversy about TikTok, and specifically whether by posting something on TikTok you were effectively giving all your passwords and PIN numbers directly to the Chinese government. I'm not sure how much of that was true, and the kerfuffle certainly seems to have died down, but YouTube took that opportunity to start developing a TikTok competitor within the YouTube framework, which they called Shorts. These are vertical videos of less than 60 seconds in length, which are designed to be watched on a phone by people with extremely limited attention spans. It's still not entirely clear what YouTube is trying to achieve here, but Shorts are receiving billions of views, and lots of people in the know believed strongly that all creators needed to be uploading Shorts content. So I made three this quarter, all of which bombed. I think they risk confusing my regular viewers, and they are a little bit fiddly to administer on the back end, so I think my Shorts experiment has come to an end, unless of course I film something that really does lend itself to that Shorts format. I thought my Monkey Attacks short had some potential, but the YouTube algorithm disagreed. So if you were wondering what those odd, short, portrait videos were all about, that's the explanation. So how am I doing against the six goals I set myself for 2021? Number one was book a cruise, which I have. I had one booked with Norwegian for early April, but it was cancelled in early January which turned out to be a bit of a saga. Not a saga cruise, although a landmark lockdown birthday in January means I am now old enough to actually go on a saga cruise. No, Norwegian, when they cancelled the cruise, offered a rebooking incentive and then refused to honour it. I made two videos about it and remain convinced that I was in the right, although Norwegian disagrees, although oddly they refuse to discuss it with me. 
but they are firmly off my Christmas card list and I will take some significant persuading to even consider them again in the future. But in December I am booked on a seven night jolly around the Western Caribbean, Caribbean with Celebrity Cruises. The Celebrity Edge 2, which is a funky new ship with some innovative features that I am very, very keen to explore. This will be my third Celebrity Cruise and I really enjoy the slightly premium experience they offer. And with eight months until the departure date, I'm pretty confident that this one will actually happen. I've also booked the flights I need to get on the cruise. I used an Amex 2 for 1 voucher and a pile of Avios and was very pleased to get first class seats outbound to Bermuda, which is very exciting as Bermuda will be a new country for me to visit. It's doubly exciting as the equipment I'm scheduled to fly on is one of BA's new 777s with a first class cabin in front of their Club Suites offering. In response to the suggestion that the new club suite seats might actually be better than the old first class seats, BA has souped up their first product in this configuration, which I am very excited to experience and share with you. I then have a separate Avios redemption from Bermuda down to Miami, and then an A380 back from Miami in the old club dormitory as I describe it. I'm hopeful of an equipment change here because no club suite planes were available when I made the booking and I've never actually flown it so I'd love to move across to do so on that return leg. Number two on the list was book another cruise, which I've not done just yet. I got very close to booking a September cruise to the Canary Islands, but Princess pulled it before we had the chance to make the booking. I think all cruise lines are being very, very cautious to only sell cruises with a high probability that they'll actually happen. So there are lots and lots and lots of staycation cruises on sale, which involve boarding in Southampton, sailing around for three, four, perhaps even seven days before returning to Southampton. For me, cruising is all about the ports, and this feels a little bit like swapping one lockdown for another, albeit one with more food. There's an update on international travel scheduled here in the UK for a couple of days time. So we'll hold on for that and see if it unlocks anything, but I am still very keen on getting a second cruise on the books for 2021, even if it is a fairly uninspiring itinerary that I end up booking. Number three was a trip to Australia, which is not looking likely. From talking to friends down under, the government there has created a total dread for the disease. The lockdown there has been successful in that there are more freedoms being enjoyed than we're experiencing here. But this virus is not going to go away and we are going to have to live with it. So after demonising the virus, the Australian government now has to re-educate the population that in a vaccinated world we are going to have to live with it and that it will not be an instant death sentence. And that is not going to be easy for them. I don't expect Australia to reopen for tourism in 2021. Number four on the list was to book a tier point run, which I have achieved. It was covered in great detail in these videos. So that's nine flights booked with two more to be booked to get me to and from Sofia. Fingers crossed things will have opened up sufficiently in the UK, the US and in Bulgaria to allow this trip to take place. Number five on the list was to start a series on Europe's second cities, which I think is still possible. To recap, if you're a bit tired of Dublin, Budapest or Prague, how about visiting Cork, Debrecen and Brno? That update on international travel should shed some more light on this and I hope to be able to do something still before the end of the year. Number six on the list was Other, which included beginning a quest to add Star Alliance Gold to my One World Gold I have via BA. This is still very much in progress and again will depend on that travel update in a few days time. But I'm an optimist, so I took a look at BA holidays to see what might be available the week after international travel may be re-legalised and there were some interesting options. Flight schedules are still limited, but there were interesting options for a flight plus three nights accommodation to Lisbon, Ibiza and Istanbul, all at quite competitive prices. And looking at all flights available on Google Flights, travelling Monday to Thursday, the week of the 24th of May, there are lots and lots of very cheap options. So I am still on track to achieve five out of my six objectives for 2021, with two of them being booked. 
But before I finish, I promised to reveal the next four videos I have planned for upload on this channel. They are... What Star Alliance program should you join? Is buying a One World Round the World ticket a good idea? A video on the advanced features of ITA Matrix and the six things I will not travel without. So thanks for watching and thanks for making it to the end. I value every like and comment, so if you have a moment, please do one or both. And if you are new and you like the sound of what's coming up, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you'll be alerted when I do upload future videos. So thanks for watching. I'll see you all again soon. Goodbye.